Windedly and welcome to my garage. My name is Fred Hope and I'm going to show you how to change the oil on a 2022 JA58 model Honda Super Cub 125. I'm going to show you the utensils you need, the parts you need, I'm going to show you how to do it and that should be as simple as that. The tools you'll need are as follows. Quarter inch ratchet, quarter inch extension, 8mm socket, 12 mil socket, 8 mil is for the filter housing, 12 mil is for the drain plug. If you haven't got a socket set, spanners would, would do. Now we move on to the parts. I'll write the part numbers down in the description, but double check your model number with whoever you're buying your parts off of. The oil filter is here, it's a tiny weenie, I mean there's a thumb for comparison, absolutely minuscule. I think they're 38 mil or something, but there's the part number. The sealing ring for the oil filter housing is this one, ending 003, just a little rubber gasket. And then packing drain cock is actually what they call, their Honda call, a sump plug washer. You could if you were feeling overkillish, I sort of was because I plan to do all the servicing on this, you can buy the drain plug as well just for belt and braces. So there's the part number for that one. What type of oil should you be using? It should be 1030, it should be synthetic, and most importantly is this rating on the back. Okay, you're looking at the the JASOT 903 2011 and the MA2 bit. Basically match that to what you find recommended in the service manual or the owner's manual. How much oil should you be putting in? Conveniently, they tell you in the owner's manual. So after draining and engine oil filter change 0.85 litres or 0.9 of a US quart. Conveniently this Fouche Silkaline stuff has a sight glass on so you can tell when you've used 800ml because there'll only be 200 left. If you're curious as to when you should be changing the oil there's a section labelled maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Uh, the oil has been in mine for a year, which means that I'm going to take it out, even though it's only got a few hundred miles on, change the filter because it's a brand new engine. Should it be going to the dealer? Probably, but they're so busy that I can't get a booking until the end of this year, so I'm going to do it myself. If you're sitting on the bike, we'd be interested in the right hand side. So sitting on the bike, bum on the seat, you want the right hand side, just to the right of the cover that says Honda, right and down, right by the brake pedal, you've got this little guy here, that's the oil filter housing, two 8mm bolts. So the next guy that we're interested in is directly underneath the engine. In front of it you've got this little metal tag, it's this guy here, this 12mm with a washer, and that's the oil drain plug or the sump plug. In front of it you've got the catalytic converter. I've ridden this bike a little bit today, I haven't done a million miles on it. It doesn't have to be screaming hot, it just has to be warm, ideally, so that the oil flows nicely and you get it all out. You can see I'm protecting the garage carpet, or rather I'm protecting the concrete with carpet, but the carpet is being protected with cardboard, and I've got uh, an oil catch pan, a washing up bowl would do, um, just anything, a big bowl in this case, because there's only about a litre coming out. So we should be expecting to see 850ml out and be putting 850ml back in. One interesting thing to note is that there's a blank there. On some models, I think the Grom, you actually get a glass, sight glass, where you can see the oil circulating in the engine and see what the level is. On this one you don't, you just get a dipstick. So we'll be using the dipstick to test later, but we also get the um, increments on the side of the bottle to let us know if we've put enough in. Here we go then, I've checked that my ratchet is set to undo. I'm just going to gently, gently, or hardly, hardly, crack that off. Bollocks! There we go. It was done up extremely tight. I'm wearing gloves mostly because it's hot, but also no one likes hand cancer, do they? So, so it's just going to want to sort of gently do it, and you'll feel when it's on its last 
little thread. I might drop it. It's okay to drop it. Just means you've got to go fishing. But you'll feel it as I listen to the dulcet tones of a two stroke strimmer. There you go, you can hear it, it's on its last little. There you go, do you hear that click? It's basically it telling you it's at the end of its thread. There we go. Didn't drop it, that's something. And didn't get oil in my hands, it's only a glove. So the oil's draining out nicely. Drip, drip, drip. You can actually see light through it, it's a, a wonderful clear colour, as it should be. It's almost brand new, it's just a year old. So we're dripping, dripping, dripping. I'll take the oil filter housing off in a second and we'll change that as well. That's just a case of putting this back in with a new washer or using the old one, I'm sure it's not that beaten up and uh, refilling. You can if you want to get a little bit more out just tip the pike on its side you can see you're getting a little bit more of it out there. Is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? Don't know. But it does seem to get a bit more out and the whole idea of changing the oil is to get as much fresh in as you can. So now we come to taking oil filter housing apart. It may be that it's done up by the same ogre that did up the sump plug, in which case it might be a bit of a struggle, but hopefully that was quite easy. Other side, just going around the brake pedal, that's why we're using an extension. And once you've done that, you can actually take the extension off of the the ratchet and just use finger power. Absolutely there is definitely no need to use an impact driver for this sort of thing. It won't save you any time and all it will do is increase your chances of buggering something up. So second little eight mil bolt coming out now. And you're just going to ease the cover off, there's a little bit more oil flying out. Look out for the spring that flies out, we'll keep that. I'm putting the inside down on the ground. And then we're going to fish the filter out with something, I'm not entirely sure what yet. There we go, I've got a pick. So we will hoist this little filter out if we can. There we go. Here she is. And like I said, absolutely tiny. Rather excellently, Honda tell you this side towards engine, you can probably see that there. The rubber gasket is already attached to the filter, there's no fuss there at all. And you can maybe make out there, just written along here, this side and spring towards filter cover. So it's pretty foolproof, that's lovely. The filter will also tell you if you're in trouble, if you pull apart these folds and take a look inside them, and you can see glittery metallic bits, which I can't, I've already had a look, then you know that the engine's mincing itself. But as it is, it's pretty clean. It's only done a couple of hundred miles. It's just doing the kindest thing for the engine. So we'll take this seal off, this rubber seal, and plop a new one on. Um, we'll plop a new filter in, plop the spring in, and everything will be great. So I've just used some kitchen towel to clean up both the filter cover and also the filter housing. You can see them in there. Beautiful and clean, hopefully. There we are. So we're just going to get a fresh filter. Of this cover, I would say that the seal in there is probably perfect to reuse many times. It slides nicely, it's still round in section, but I bought a load of them, so I'm going to chuck one in this time, but I dare say for the next few changes I'll just reuse what I put in. Here we go then. Old gasket coming out, if we can get it. There she is, almost. Old gasket out. Like I said, it's probably perfectly fine. New gasket incoming, and as I said, I've written all of the part numbers down in the description. So if you want to do this at your house or after work, if you work in a garage, you can. It's as easy as just flopping this guy on there. 
thus it's ready to go back on. We already know that the instructions are written on there. We've got this side towards engine, this side towards engine with the seal on. Just get a bit of the old, well, new old oil. I know some people like to use fresh, but I don't think it makes a difference. So I'm going to pop that guy in there, and you'll feel it kind of click onto its little house. Then we've got the spring, which might fall into the oil. Hopefully it doesn't. No, it's not going to. So I'm just going to get one to kind of bite a little bit, just to hold it. Just twizzled in gently. Get our other friend. He's going to come along here, and again just gently twizzle it in. And then we'll use our extension whilst pressing on the cover. Make sure it's seated well. So wind it in, and this will only be finger tight to start with. Just like that, you can see it compressing up, hopefully. Yeah. Other one the same. Really, hands and gloves don't help, but it's nice and easy. How tight should these be? I haven't got a torque setting, so I haven't got a workshop manual. But don't murder them. Do not do them super tight. It's a steel fixing and an aluminium aluminium housing so literally finger tight and then just the gentlest nip up the number of times I've stuffed up a fixing by over tightening so literally that just to pull it tight and then this just to pull it tight no more than that I'm not having white knuckles nothing like that why am I putting a fresh sump plug washer on? It's probably fine. Absolutely, you're probably right. But hopefully I can show you. When we compare these two, this one's totally uniform and smooth. Uniform and smooth. This one, you can see down the bottom here. You can see down the bottom here, and you can hear. There's actually a bit of deformation there. It's a nice soft aluminium. Hopefully you can see that ridge there. There we go. Ridge there. So that's already deformed to the hard steel bolt and also the engine casing once. You could probably reuse it. You could probably sand it down with emery paper or whatever. This one, there's absolutely no lip anywhere. So it's ready to deform and make a perfect seal. And for the cost of a sump plug washer, you may as well do it. Equally, if you're in a bind, and you don't have a sump plug washer, definitely put this one back on. Don't run without. So back under we go with a fresh sump plug washer. There we go, that's why we've got cardboard at hand. Doing this left-handed. So there you go, I'm just gonna twizzle that in finger tight. And again, nip it up. I'm sure there will be a workshop manual that says what the torque setting is. I don't have it, and I'm just gonna use my S and J. What is S and J? It's skill and judgment. So skill and judgment is something that was taught to me by my French teacher, Mr. Plews. And he used to teach us to use S and J to cheat or rather pre-guess what the answers would be for listening comprehension exams in French. So I can just feel that deform very gentle pressure. I'm not wellying the hell out of it. There we go. That's more than adequate. So use your S and J. Do not over tighten. Do not over tighten. Do not over tighten. Okay, to put the new oil in, we take the dipstick out. I've already unscrewed it. Doubly useful because you measure the depth, uh, or rather measure the oil level with it unscrewed, not screwed in. And the oil is going to go in that hole there. And it even says, recommended to use Honda Genuine Oil. They had some at Fowler's, they couldn't sell it to me. So I'm using the Fuchs Silkaline. Okay, nice clean funnel, essential. Even to the point where it's worth shoving a piece of kitchen paper through it and pulling it through. The last thing you want to be doing is chucking dirt and grit out of a funnel into an engine. Oil. Open her up. This one's got a foil seal, as most of them do. Pen, knife, pick, whatever. Rant into it. Chuck that down in the used oil. 
and then just keep an eye on how much you're putting in. So we're going for 850 mil. So, so far it's telling us we've put in 400 mil. There's 600 left, so I've got to keep going. And I know you probably don't need telling, but for God's sake, do not start the engine with no oil in. Just 50 mil more. Catch the drips out of the funnel with the kitchen paper if you're feeling flash. Chuck it down on the cardboard and you don't wreck the carpet. In she goes. Pull her out. Where's the level? Bang at the top. Absolutely succulent. Check again, just for good measure. Bang at the top. Wonderful. So I'm going to start the engine. Let it run for a few seconds. So the final dip. And that is just bob on the top. I don't know whether you can see that it's oil on a black piece of plastic, but there you have it. Uh, the part numbers are down below. You needed an 8mm and a 12mm socket or spanner. Uh, if you're using sockets, you want an extension and a ratchet. Uh, you take the old parts out, you put the new parts in, and you put fresh oil in. Make sure you dispose of the oil um, neatly, tidily, and legally. I just take ours down the tip, um, and you can dispose of it there, but don't go chuck it down the drain or burning at the planet, it's buggered enough as it is. So that was how to change the oil on a Honda JA58 Super Cup 125. Thank you very much for watching, uh, and if there are other jobs you want to see me do, chances are I've already made a video, or if not, it's coming. Uh, I also do biscuit reviews and other Honda Cub related content, so have a look. Cheers. One last thing to say about that engine is that I didn't change, um, or I didn't clean out the screen, which it still has, despite having an oil filter for the first time. Um, nor did I clean out the centrifugal oil spinner. So actually this engine's filtering oil three ways, centrifugally, straining and also filtering. So it should be a super clean engine and long lived, hopefully. Um, the reason I didn't do it is because I couldn't get the parts in time. So next time I do an oil change, I will endeavor to do the whole job. Um, but as it is, this is a kinder way of keeping the bike than not doing it at all. So. That's why I only did oil and filter as opposed to oil, filter, strainer and centrifugal thingy.